Section 4, Parallel Algorithms. In this section, we'll learn how to implement the basic building blocks of parallel algorithms in CUDA. We'll learn how to synchronize and share data between threads and cover three basic algorithms, reduction, prefix sum, and filtering. Introduction to Shared Memory. In this video, we'll learn about shared memory, which is a pool of fast, read-write memory located on each SM. It can be used to share data between threads in a block. Up to this point, we've been looking at problems where the data layout of the output matches that of the input, and where each element can be computed independently of the others. These problems are a great fit for CUDA. They're easy to implement and generally run very fast. But it's not always that easy. In this video, we'll look at an example that doesn't fit quite so neatly into the CUDA model, transposing a matrix. A matrix is essentially a two-dimensional array. When we transpose it, Basically, the rows of the input become columns of the output. Or to state it mathematically, dest ij equals source ji for all i and j within the matrix. Transposing a non-square matrix also changes its shape. For example, the transpose of a 10 by 20 matrix is a 20 by 10 matrix. In this example, I'm only going to handle square matrices just to keep the code a little simpler and focus on the important CUDA concepts. Here's a simple reference implementation of transpose on the host. It's just a for loop over the x and y coordinates, but we swap x and y when indexing into the dest array. A basic CUDA implementation is also very simple. I'm assuming here that the matrix dimension is a multiple of the block size, so we don't have to worry about bounds checking or use CUDA malloc 2 d for alignment. Again, this helps keep the example nice and simple. Just like the host implementation, we swap x and y between the source and destination indices. But if we look closely at these indices, right away we can spot a performance problem. The access to the dest array is going to be strided. Each thread in a block will write to a location that's an entire row away from the previous thread, and of course this won't coalesce. Now, each block is reading from a square section of the input and writing to a square section of the output. If we could just rearrange which threads are writing where, within each block, everything could coalesce. And that's where shared memory comes in. We've looked at this memory hierarchy diagram a couple times already, but there's one box we haven't talked about yet, and that's shared memory. Like the texture and constant caches, it resides on the SM. Each SM typically has around 64 to 96 kilobytes of shared memory, which can be split up between the blocks running on that SM. It's much faster to access than global memory, but not quite as fast as registers. Unlike the texture and constant caches, shared memory can be written directly from your kernel code. Every thread within a block can access the same section of shared memory, so it can be used to send data between threads. Like everything in CUDA, it has some rules that need to be followed for best performance. We'll talk about those later. For now, let's see how we can use this to improve our transpose kernel. First off, I declare a variable in the kernel with the double underscore shared attribute. This means it will be allocated in shared memory. Each block will get a separate instance of this variable. I've made this array big enough to hold all the data that will be processed by a single block. The basic idea here is that I'm going to read in a square tile from global memory, transpose that tile in shared memory, and then write the tile back out to the correct location in the output. Here, I read from global memory into shared memory in the normal order, so my reads coalesce. And here, each thread reads from shared memory and writes to global memory, again in coalesced order. Notice that the thread is reading a different element from shared memory than it wrote. This is what allows us to rearrange the global memory writes. I've skipped over some parts of this kernel. I'll back up now and explain some of those details. First, there's the setting of the output coordinates. Notice that I use block idx.y to set x out and block idx.x to set y out. This transposes the whole tile to the correct output location. The indexing here is a little tricky and it's worth thinking about carefully. Let's look at a diagram. Each block is going to read a tile from the input into a chunk of shared memory. As it does that, it's transposing within the tile so it reads a row and writes a column. Then it writes that tile back to a different tile of the output. This is where swapping the block x and y comes into play. 
Within that tile, everything is already lined up, so we use the thread x and y coordinates in the normal way. I also skipped over these two statements. These are using CUDA's Cooperative Groups API to synchronize our block. Remember that a block can be split into multiple warps, and those won't all run at the same time. When we use shared memory, that can cause race conditions, where one warp tries to read some memory before another warp has had a chance to set it. So the first statement here gets an object representing all the threads in this block. And the sync function waits until all those threads have reached this point. That makes sure that our shared memory tile is completely initialized before we read it. The Cooperative Groups API has a bunch of synchronization and inter-thread communication functions. It's worth looking it up in the programming guide if you're writing more complicated algorithms. Like everything else in CUDA, shared memory has some tricky details when it comes to performance. First, using shared memory can affect occupancy. Each block gets its own copy of a shared variable, and there's only so much shared memory on an SM. So if you use a lot, it will limit the number of blocks you can run at once, which can reduce performance. As always, we need to test to be sure. Second, we have something called bank conflicts. Shared memory is organized into 32 banks. Each bank can only access one location at a time. So for example, if thread 0 reads from the first element of your shared tile, and thread 1 reads from the 32nd element, they'll be accessing the same bank, and one of those accesses will have to wait for the other to complete. However, if both those threads read from the same address, that bank only has to access one location, and it can broadcast that value to multiple threads simultaneously. This can be tricky to reason about, but fortunately the profiler will tell you if shared memory efficiency is low. There's one little detail in the transpose kernel that relates to this. Right here, I added an extra element to the y dimension of the shared tile. When we're writing a column, this adjusts the stride so our threads don't hit the same bank. Now that we've gone through all the details, let's check the performance. The version using shared memory is about twice as fast. Even though it makes our code a fair bit more complicated, it's probably a worthwhile trade-off in a kernel that needs really good performance. This is also not the fastest possible transpose kernel. The CUDA toolkit includes a transpose example with several different versions of the kernel that go through various optimizations. That's worth taking a look at if you want to really get into performance tuning.